Hello and welcome back to Goethe CVI webinar series. Today I would like to welcome you to the topic of CMR in myocarditis with a focus on Lake Louise criteria. We will begin with a brief introduction into the state of art of myocarditis and then focus on the role for CMR. We will explore Lake Louise criteria, the currently accepted supporting criteria in diagnosis of myocarditis and then focus on potential new role for novel imaging markers, such as T1 mapping. The current state of art of knowledge and clinical management in myocarditis is beautifully summarized in a recent position statement of the European Society of Cardiology. The paper stresses the role of myocarditis as an important cause of dilative cardiomyopathy and sudden cardiac death in young people. It also clarifies the diagnostic pathway which commences with clinically suspected myocarditis and is concluded by definite confirmation on endomyocardial biopsy. The position statement provides the following recommendations for the use of CMR in myocarditis. It confirms the value of CMR findings based on Lake Lewis criteria, as well as clarifies its context of use in clinically stable patients prior to endomyocardial biopsy. CMR does not replace the role of endomyocardial biopsy in diagnosis of myocarditis and should not be used in life-threatening presentations. The role of CMR in myocarditis is supportive. It provides an increased pretest likelihood in suspected myocarditis. Functional abnormalities in myocarditis are commonly subtle and, if present, they affect myocardium globally without a definite regional preference, which is more commonly encountered in coronary artery disease. Pericardial effusion is a common yet non-specific finding, which provides some supportive evidence for the presence of active inflammation. Pericardial effusion can be mild and localized, or severe and globally enveloping the heart with signs of hemodynamic compromise such as diastolic collapse of right ventricular free wall. Lake Louise criteria are a composite of myocardial late gadolinium enhancement, T2 and T1 weighted imaging, which includes the presence of late gadolinium enhancement in a typical myocarditic pattern with a corresponding increase in T2 signal as well as increase in relative measures, including edema ratio of more than 2 and global relative enhancement ratio of more than 4. The findings indicate myocarditis if 2 out of 3 approaches are positive. By using CMR, we've gained important new insights into the pathophysiology of myocarditis as well as course of disease. Myocarditic pattern of late gadolinium enhancement typically spares endocardium and concentrates on epicardial and medial layers of myocardium. Approximately two-thirds of patients with previous myocarditis have evidence of subsequent myocardial damage as seen by the presence of late gadolinium enhancement. Late gadolinium enhancement has prognostic relevance in myocarditis and its presence has been associated with a worse outcome. Increased T2 signal on T2-weighted imaging is less common and usually representative of an acute or ongoing active inflammation. Because of the more uniform spread of gray values in T2-weighted images, detecting an increase in T2 signal can be occasionally quite challenging. Hence the role for a supportive quantitative measure edema ratio, which relates the signal intensity of myocardium to that of skeletal muscle. Global relative enhancement ratio is based on T1-weighted acquisition before and after administration of gadolinium contrast agent and intends to capture the greater accumulation of gadolinium contrast agent in the areas of active inflammation. Because it is technically challenging and less reproducible, T1-weighted imaging has been less successfully adopted into the clinical practice. Lake Louise criteria have been shown to have good positive predictive value, meaning when the findings are present, disease can be confirmed. However, the ability to exclude disease 
or negative predictive value is rather poor. In seminal work from Vanessa Ferreira and colleagues, native T1 mapping was shown to have higher diagnostic accuracy in detecting myocardial edema compared to T2-weighted imaging and one of the components of Lake Louise criteria. In a further work from the same group, native T1 mapping was shown to significantly outperform T2-weighted imaging and similar in its performance to late gadolinium enhancement imaging, which is partly due to the semi-quantitative definition of an abnormal T1 map based on a color scale, using green as a definition of normal and red as abnormal, allowing to detect only large differences, which are also sufficiently regional to be detected by late gadolinium enhancement. In a recent study by Rocio Inohar and colleagues, we specifically focused on the ability of T1 mapping to discriminate between acute and chronic convalescent stages in patients with clinical diagnosis of myocarditis. In this study, we applied two important concepts. Firstly, to separate between diffuse and regional myocardial disease by T1 mapping and late gadolinium enhancement respectively. And secondly, the definition of abnormal native T1 based on the predefined normal ranges. That acute myocarditis is defined by predominantly diffuse disease is based on the observations that these patients present with very, very high native T1 values, which are more than five standard deviations above the mean of the normal range, and with less strongly and regionally defined late gadolinium enhancement. Patients with chronic myocarditis have a combination of diffuse as well as regional disease, evidenced by native T1 values which are more than two standard deviations above the mean of the normal range, that is, they are abnormal, as well as evidence of regionally separated tissues, myocardial fibrosis, on late gadolinium enhancement. These observations led us to propose a new diagnostic algorithm for clinical diagnosis of myocarditis, employing distinctively different algorithms for acute and chronic convalescent myocarditis. In prospective validation, native T1 of more than five standard deviations was able to virtually identify all cases of acute myocarditis whereas chronic myocarditis or convalescence were best defined by a combination of abnormal native T1 and or the presence of late gadolinium enhancement. In summary, ladies and gentlemen, we've looked at the role of Lake Louise criteria in providing supporting evidence in clinically suspected myocarditis, as well as providing risk stratification in patients with previous myocarditis based on the presence of late gadolinium enhancement, indicating residual myocardial injury. We've also touched upon the future role of T1 mapping in providing a more accurate diagnosis of myocarditis by identifying disease stage and potentially allowing for a more stage-directed treatment. And here comes the list of papers I have used in today's presentation. And finally, I would like to thank you for your attention. <music>